it's a really, really cool moment when somebody comes in and they've never really lifted weights before. And you have that mom and they lift that barbell up above their head. I love breaking limiting beliefs because that, that's really where the magic happens. That body fat percentage decreases, that muscle mass percentage increases, and we start feeling you know, more confident and good in our body. After the age of 30, our muscle mass begins to decrease one to 2% every single year. I highly encourage to continue to lift heavy weights even as we progress and get older. If anything, I would almost cut down on the Jackie, you've been in the fitness industry for over 13 years. You have a degree in exercise science. You've played college level basketball. You're a nationally certified strength and conditioning coach, personal trainer, and now the co-owner of Just Life Fitness Training Studios. You help women gain confidence in their bodies through strength training and proper nutrition. It's about 11 a.m. How does someone like you start their day? What have you eaten? Have you exercised already? I want you to walk us through your morning. Yes. All right. It is 11 a.m., which means a lot has already been done with the day. But first of all, Jessica, thank you so much for having me on. I'm really excited to be on here with you and connect. So Really, in regards to morning routine, I try to keep it as similar as possible and consistent with my routine. I'm actually traveling right now, so I'm not at home, but really my, my routine stays the same. So I, I woke up, I set an alarm, even though I'm out of town. And first thing I do is I chug about two glasses of water. So I get in as much water as possible right when I wake up since I haven't been drinking throughout the night. And then I always eat breakfast. So I never skip breakfast. And so I get that in. What does that look like? Typically I do, depending on what I'm doing for my workout for the day, I usually do about two to three eggs, either scrambled, hard boiled, whatever I'm feeling for the week. And then I get my workout done nice and early because as soon as the day gets going, you never know what's gonna happen. So I personally prefer to get my workout in early in the morning if possible. And then right when I'm done, I am chugging more water. I did a little LMNT packet today, and then I eat a second breakfast. So my routine consists of two breakfasts every single day, no matter what I'm doing. So I typically just do another set of eggs or spice it up and do an omelet, and then off my day and on to work. Okay, a couple of nuances I want to clarify. Do you put anything in your water in the morning, like lemon or anything? I usually don't. I usually just get after it, chug it. Um, again, sometimes I'll do like an LMNT packet or something like that. And for those who don't know, Element is electrolytes. So I believe they have salt or sodium, magnesium, and potassium. Yep, nailed it. Super simple. Sodium, potassium, magnesium. Just get some good electrolytes in the body, salt back into the body, and usually gets me nice and hydrated. Wonderful. Okay. I want to talk about aging when it comes to women and our bodies. Something you posted recently online uh, in regards to women's bodies as we age. After the age of 30, our muscle mass begins to decrease one to 2% every single year. When we hit 30 years old, our bone density starts to decrease by at least 1% every year. How can we take a proactive approach to this to maintain maintain our health and our strength. Yeah, these, uh, right, fun facts, but not so fun facts for us females, right, is unfortunately, as we age, that bone density, that muscle mass is going to decline. And so, right, what can we do to proactively try to prevent that, plateau it, um, so that that negative effect is not happening to us. And so the the major go-tos um, for me is going to be strength training. So I'm a really big believer in lifting weights so that, again, we're strengthening that bone density in our body. We're strengthening that muscle mass so that we're helping that number not continue to decline. And if anything, we can still raise those numbers up even in our 30s, 40s, and 50s. We see it all the time. Um, but we have to do strength training. And then on top of that, we have to make sure that our nutrition is on point, that we're fueling our body with, you know, natural, real foods and really big believer of protein. And so making sure that we're getting enough protein in our body to help repair and then build that muscle as well. 
Does it, the strength training look differently depending if you're in your thirties, forties, or fifties? You know, it really, really depends on the person, right? Uh, when I was lifting weights in my twenties compared to now I'm 35, it definitely looks different. Um, what I would say is I think that there is sometimes, you know, a, a misunderstanding of as we get older, people might get a little bit more scared to lift heavy weights and be a little bit more intimidated. They don't want to get hurt. But I actually like to encourage the opposite, that as we get older, we should continue to be lifting heavy weights. If anything, we give ourselves more rest during those strength cycles, during those strength circuits that we might be doing. So I highly encourage to continue to lift heavy weights, even as we progress and get older. If anything, I would almost cut down on the cardio, the high intensity, the things that are going to really shoot those cortisol levels through the roof and stick to that true strength training, give ourselves adequate rest in between sets so that we're allowing that heart rate to come down, our body's resting and recovering, and then we can go back to another set. I'm glad you mentioned cardio. How important is cardio? I love cardio, don't get me wrong, but if I had to choose whether I was going to advise myself or a client to do a strength workout or a cardio workout, I would just coach them up and tell them to do a strength training workout. So we need cardio, right? Our heart, we need that. We need to keep it healthy. Um, but a lot of times, even if we're doing weightlifting and we're doing strength training, trust me, you're still going to get your heart rate up. So that muscle is still working. That organ is still working. And so even if we're doing a strength training routine, we're still going to get cardiovascular work in. And so even just if, if it's the time thing as well, right? So maybe we only have, 30 to 45 minutes in the gym instead of an hour to 90 minutes, we're going to get more benefits from that strength training workout than we are from just doing, you know, an hour to 90 minutes of cardio. So we're building muscle, the more muscle we have on our body, the more calories that we're going to burn throughout the day anyways. And so to me, it's just, it's a win-win. You have 20 minutes, three times a week to work out. What exercises are you doing? <laughs> love this so yeah you don't need hours on hours in the gym I'm okay if all you have to give is 20 minutes I am totally okay with that and again what I would do is pick a strength training routine personally I would go total body for all three of those workouts especially since we're only doing 20 minutes I would not split up the body so what I would do is I would pick a major upper body movement and a major lower body movement that I was going to focus on for the day and then add in accessory movements, core work to complement those movements. So for example, day one um, might be a deadlift and a pull-up day. Uh, day two might be a squat and a bench press day. And then day three, looking for more of single leg movements. So maybe single leg squats, step ups, lunges with some single arm overhead presses and things like that. So always hitting major upper body, major lower body, and then accessory movements to add in between. This is what I've been doing. And you can give me your expert advice. I, I was doing weight lifting, weight training less than a year ago. And then I, I felt like I needed to eat more and I felt like I needed more and more protein, but I wasn't like, it was too much for my body. So I kind of went back to what I used to do, which is more bar and Pilates. And so now I'll kind of alternate between doing bar at Pilates and then walking and running. Yeah. I mean, everybody's going to be different, right? And if those workouts satisfy your soul and your body feels good, then keep doing it, right? With the bar workouts, you're still going to get strength training in there. Um, it's a great routine. You have a good mix of, of what you're doing. So you're not overdoing it on one thing. If I had a recommendation, I would love to see you add in one to two days of strength training per week, even if, even if it's for that 20 minutes that we talked about. But a well-rounded program um, is really what I believe in. So even at our gym, we max our membership at three times per week. So if you're a member, if you're a client, you can only come in and train three times a week. And that's because we want you doing bar workouts, Pilates, yoga, going outside for a walk. And so the balance is, is super important. So I love what you're doing, right? If you're getting there, you're active, you're happy, you're not hitting a plateau, then you could stay the course. But you did notice, right? When you were doing the strength training, you probably felt more hungry because you were burning more calories. So most likely what was happening, you were doing the strength training, 
your body was building some muscle, which then we're, means we're burning more calories. And then your body's like, ah, give me more protein, give me more calories. So not necessarily a bad thing. It's just finding that balance, um, understanding that basal metabolic rate of how many calories is Jessica burning on a day-to-day -day basis so that we know then how many calories we should be eating. Mm -hmm. It's like you're in my head because the one thing that I did want to tweak in my routine is adding like two days a week in the gym, doing weights, lower body, uh, like yeah. I was doing before, but here's the, here's an issue that I found was not only like, yeah, you need to eat more food because muscle gets hungry. So the cost of food, and then also your body changing. So then maybe you don't have, you don't have the same body shape. So it's clothes fit you differently. So you might need to get new clothes, which can be an amazing problem. But those are just two things I didn't expect as I'm, you know, moving through my workouts. Yeah, no, that's a good point, right? Increase of, of cost of food and then clothes changing potentially as well, right? But, you know, hopefully the end result, um, again, you want to look good. You want to feel good. Everyone's going to have their own personal preference of, you know, what jeans they're wearing or how they're feeling in their leggings. So that is super important. But at the same time, you know, maybe even just start with one day of that strength training so that we're at least working on the bone density, we're working on the muscle mass um, and we're not overdoing it. And then if you feel good and, the changes are okay with you, then you could always bump it up after that. Yes. Yes. Good point. What are some common challenges that you found with clients or different people that you work with and how do you overcome them? Yeah, I think, I know I kind of already mentioned it a little bit, but a really, really big, just, you know, common thing that we come across, we work with mostly females, right? So um, moms, either pre-baby, post-baby, and a lot of people and females especially are nervous to lift heavy weights or, you know, like you said, they're afraid that they're going to get big and bulky and they're going to have a look that they don't necessarily want, or they're afraid that they're going to get hurt. So I love all these things when I have someone come in or reach out online and these are their limiting beliefs. I love breaking limiting beliefs because that, that's really where the magic happens. And so it really just for us starts with education, right? And so educating them on what are the benefits of doing strength training and really how is it gonna help you get the results that you're looking for? Because most females, right? They wanna be slim, they wanna be toned, right? And they, they wanna have a nice physique. They wanna be comfortable, confident in their clothes and things like that. And so what we find is by lowering your body fat percentage and increasing that muscle mass percentage in a healthy way, is gonna help get you that tone defined look that most people are looking for. And that's where strength training really comes in because it's gonna help decrease that body fat percentage, increase that muscle mass percentage in a healthy way. Um, and then educating them on, right, how to properly and safely lift those weights. And so once we show them that we're gonna coach you, we're gonna teach you, we're not just gonna come in in day one and be maxing out. That's not what we're doing, right? We're gonna progressively get there. And so once we can show them that we care about your form, your technique, the safety of your body um, and things like that, then it really starts to give them the confidence that they can lift the heavy weights safely, properly. And ooh, now I'm starting to get the results where I'm feeling a little better, I'm looking a little better, and now I wanna continue on this. And it's a really, really cool moment when somebody comes in and they've never really lifted weights before and you have that mom and they lift that barbell up above their head, which when they came in, they were like, I don't want to lift that. That's, that's too intense. And they put it over their head. You know, they look at us and it's just, it's truly an amazing feeling. And so it's, it's something that we love to see because it's like, I accomplished that. I lifted that, you know, and I'm a badass. Mm -hmm. Can you build muscle and lose fat at the same time? Yeah. So in our ideal world, that's, that's exactly how we would like to do things. So lowering that body fat per percentage, increasing that muscle mass percentage. And we're also going to have to look at, I know I mentioned earlier, but our basal metabolic rate. So what is our BMR? How many calories am I personally burning on a day-to-day -day basis? So then I can put my nutrition in line with those numbers as well. So, right, what is my body burning so that I know what my caloric intake should be? And even if you're lifting weights, you can still be at a slight caloric deficit. We don't like to do a huge caloric deficit for any of our clients or people that we work with. Um, so just a moderate caloric deficit because we still want you to have energy to lift those weights. We want you to be able to get through that workout. 
um, but a slight deficit if the goal is weight loss and lowering that body fat percentage. But yeah, most of the time, if someone is sticking to the strength training routine that we put them on, and then they're following that nutrition program that we put them on, that is usually exactly what we see. That body fat percentage decreases, that muscle mass percentage increases, and we start feeling you know, more confident and good in our body. Speaking of nutrition, I want to hear your thoughts on tracking your macros. Do you think everyone should be weighing their food? That's a great question. I think that really just goes back to where are we at in our health and fitness journey, right? And so to be honest, if we are just starting off with someone in their health and fitness journey and they've never lifted weights before, they've barely worked out, they've definitely never tracked their food before, that is not something that we personally start with because it could be very overwhelming. And so what we like to do first is, okay, let's just pull out all of the unnecessary food with all of the additives, all the junk, the things that we, you know, we keep in our cabinets. Let's just put in real food. So we're focusing on protein, vegetables. We don't cut out carbs, but let's just get in some healthy carbohydrates in there. Um, and starting with that, right? And then once we can see a client and they are, they're in tune, right? And they've really taken the lead on following those steps of getting real food into their diet consistent, consistently. We then can start to, you know, throw some numbers at them in regards to their BMR, their macros, proteins, carbs, and fats. But it's really individual. Um, and what we like to do is we treat our nutrition with our clients and our training program on an individual and one-on-one -on -one basis because everybody is going to succeed and kind of fuel off different things, right? So if you're somebody that loves numbers, you love tracking, well, then let's do it. We'll do it together. I'll educate you. Let's look at these numbers. But if it's someone that this is going to overwhelm them and tip them to the point of not wanting to continue on this journey, then I really don't want to get them to that point, if that makes sense. So we try to take it in phases of not being overwhelming. Again, once we can get to that real real nutrition food in the beginning, taking out the junk food. Um, the next thing that we will look at is our protein. To me, it's the easiest next thing to look at so that we're not stressing about our carbs. We're not stressing out about fats. For protein, if we could hit 30% protein, that's amazing. Most people, most females have a very, very hard time hitting 30% protein. Like you mentioned earlier, it was a lot of food and it was hard. Um, so that's really what we see. So it's like, if we can't get to that 30% protein, I really don't want to overwhelm you with all of the other numbers and carbs and fats and things like that. So like to accomplish that first. And then again, if someone is 100% all in and they want to keep going, then we just start to tackle kind of one macro at a time. Keep it simple. Yes. Okay. So speaking of eating healthy, if if someone, I want to get into some of the rebuttals that you might get from people who say, you know, I don't have time. I have kids. I have business. I have all these things. I don't have time to make my own food. What would you say to that one? How, how can you make eating healthier and getting in all of those different macros, the protein and everything easier for someone that's very busy and thinks that they don't have the time? Yeah, I love it because we're all busy. And so honestly, too, so I have two-year-old twins. So since being oh. a mom and having kiddos, it's honestly been able to help me connect and level with my clients better than ever, right? Because before I didn't have kids, so I didn't have that like extra time stressor, you know, um, and reasoning. And so now that I do, I just try to give, you know, my clients or the people that I'm helping just real advice of what I do, right? Because I get it. I have kids. I have a business. I don't have very much time. Um, and so the first thing before even strategy comes into place, we ask all of our clients, you know, what is your why? So when you come in day one, you know, why did you call us? Why do you want to be here? And we ask this for this to be a very deep answer. So not just, I want to lose 20 pounds because I want to feel better. No, it's, it's something deeper than that. So we have to continue to dig. We have to continue to get to know each other. Um, that's really important to us because most likely you're not going to open up with me on day one, right? But maybe day five, day 10, day 15, as we continue to get to know each other. But I have to figure out the real reason of why do you want to lift weights or lose weight, get healthy? Is it for your kids? Is it because 
your parents are diabetic and you don't, you don't want to have to go through that, right? There's some really, really good underlying reasoning. And so I like to find that answer because then when we do come across rebuttals or a little bit of pushback, I'm going to go back to that why, right? So when you came in, why did you really want to lose these 20 pounds? And I bring that back into the picture because a lot of times everything starts up here in our mind. And so I like to circle back to that why so that we can dig deep down into that motivation. Once we can talk those things out, then let's go into strategy, right? So what I do is I prepare and, and plan over the weekend. So I know that, that my weekdays are going to be slammed. And so what we do is we have a number of different meal prep and recipe ideas for our clients so that if they're like, I don't know what to cook, but I don't have a lot of time. We have tons of recipe books so that we can save them time of Googling stuff on their own, looking up healthy options. So we really try to provide them with as many resources as possible. And then, okay, now we have that resource. Let's try to cut time down in the kitchen. And how many meals can we knock out in one hour? And let me tell you, I learned to cook a lot of food in one hour or less in that kitchen. And so then I just prepare those meals for the week. And then if I do cook anything during the week for myself, for the family, whatever it might be, I make double, triple so that I have leftovers at all times. So I never cook a meal that's just going to feed me for one sitting. I definitely throw an extra ingredients so that I have more than more meals throughout the week. But um, yeah, besides like little strategy stuff, we've really just found that circling back to your why, of why do you really want this? We can then, we can then get there. A couple other things I want to find out how important they are in your overall health and fitness journey. One of them is tracking your steps. I used to wear a watch and I would religiously track it and I would make sure that I hit a certain number and I would go outside and make sure I took a walk if I, if I was close or, you know, make sure I got okay. to a certain point and it got to be a little too stressful and I decided I'm going to yeah. take a break from the watch and I have not put it back on. But I've thought about it lately. And so I want to see that, you know, everyone hears that 10K steps a day. What are your thoughts? I love 10K steps a day. I also love technology for fitness and I dislike it. So I can very much relate. So I wear an Apple watch. I also used to wear a whoop. So I would have both going on. And uh, my health kind of took a turn a couple of years ago. And so it, like you said, it was just overwhelming. It was causing more stress on me. And so I took the whoop off. I now just use the Apple watch. I really just think that it goes back to personal preference and where you're at in your stage of life, where you're at in your stress levels and what is important to you, right? I will say, because you probably tracked before, you probably have a really good idea of, okay, what did it take for me to get 10K steps when I was actually tracking? And then what can I do for 10K steps now, even though I don't have the technology maybe yelling at me? So, you know, if somebody's just starting off and they want to wear technology to track, like, let's do it. I love to have trackable data so that I can help coach somebody for myself. I do love it so I could see what's going on or, hey, I, it's the end of the day. I should get out for an extra walk. But just like you said, even for me, when it got to the point of I was... I didn't want to look at how bad my sleep was because I was a new mom. And so I was like, I know how bad my sleep is. I don't need somebody else telling me how bad my sleep is. I just took it off. Right. And so now I'm getting to the point where I might bring it back, but I know I'm used to my day now and my routine. And so I kind of know what it takes to get those 10 K steps in little things that I do, even without tracking is if I have a phone call meeting or somebody wants to meet with meet with me in person, I simply ask to do a walking meeting. So that helps me get my steps in and, Hey, do you want to grab coffee? You know, can I have your time? You could definitely have my time. We're just going to make it a coffee and walking meeting. So let's go get our steps in. So I try to do little things like that throughout the day so that, you know, as a business owner, we're not sitting at our desk all day long, but highly encourage movement, but it just goes back to it has to be sustainable for you. It has to make you happy and it can't add more stress on your life. Or as we all know, if you're adding more stress to that life, you're doing more damage anyways, right? Those cortisol levels are going up. We're going to hold on to fat. We're not going to lose it. And so it's got to decrease the stress for you. 
Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. That's kind of what I sensed when I was intuitively making the decision. And then I'm like, then I moved and then I'm like, huh, I don't know if I'm getting in as many steps as I should be. Uh, but it is like you said, if you do it for, you know, a certain amount of time, you get a sense for it. It's like right. tracking your food as well, because, you know, I, I weighed my food for over six months and I have a friend and she kind of got me into it. And she said, you all you have to do is for a few months and then and you'll then you be good because you have an idea of what the, the calories are in each thing. And you generally tend to eat the same foods over and over. So yes. No, I love that because I think it could be daunting and tedious to track your food forever. And so that's a great point is if you do it for, if you could be dedicated to do it for a short amount of time, so you're actually learning what your, you learn what it feels like. You learn what your caloric intake feels like. And if you're overdoing it and things like that, and then from just measuring over and over again, you learn, okay, what does a, a real portion size look like? And then you could just carry that over into normal life and not necessarily have to track. I love that. Exactly. You mentioned uh, your sleep and how that was affected by having two little babies. <laughs> so what did you do? How did, how did your days or your routines change? How did you compensate for missing out on that good sleep? Yeah, I learned sleep is very, very important to me, important to my soul. And so it is definitely something, especially in the early days that I had to be aware of. Um, right early on of being a mom, when they're, when they're newborns, you have very little control because you just have to get up in the middle of the night. There's two of them. And so myself and my partner were often up with both of them just because there was two. Um, but you know, once we, you know, got in a rhythm and a routine, sleep was important to both myself and my partner. And so we communicated about that first of all. And so then once we were comfortable, we actually then switched and just took night shifts. So that one person can sleep one night and then the other person could sleep the next night so that we could, you know, function as well as possible the next day. So I think just communication and being aware of it is, is really, really important and not being afraid to take naps. I, but pre-kids, I would have never, ever taken a nap ever because I didn't want to waste time. I didn't feel like I needed to, um, but really learning to listen to your body, you you'll be surprised, right? I'm sure you know this, like your body's going to tell you. So if your body's saying, Hey, I need you to close your eyes and just rest for a second, or I need you to nap. Sometimes you, if you have the opportunity to, you just have to listen. Um, the other thing that I started to get really in tune with was going to bed at the same time and waking up at the same time. I found that my body really responded well to that instead of having a really inconsistent schedule is that I then tried to get to bed, you know, around 9 p.m. and then waking up at the 4 or 5 a.m., but staying as consistent as possible with that. Um, and then obviously, you know, with weekends, you know, th those can get a little iffy, but even on the weekends, I really try, um, unless I have, you know, something crazy important going on, to stay in that sleep, sleep schedule and pattern. And it's done really, really well for me. 4 a.m. club, I love it. <laughs> so much um, to do. Yeah, right. Um, okay. You are very passionate about health and fitness. Why? I love the health and fitness industry because it's life changing, right? I think that you could agree to this is that it has opened the door and allowed me to help so many individuals. And that's really what I want to do is I've learned so much from my personal health and fitness journey from playing sports to then becoming a mom, having hormone issues and, and all of this other crazy stuff is I don't want people to go through the same pain, right? Whether like there's business coaches out there, there's fitness coaches out there, whatever it might be. Why go through the same pain if I can help you take a shortcut, guide you in that right direction and ultimately ch change the trajectory of your whole potential life, right? Because health and fitness is everything that you have, right? We don't want to be in the hospital. We don't want to be paying for our medical bills. We don't want to be on antibiotics and drugs for our entire lives and doing more damage to our body. And so those things have just been a true passion to me. And so I want to just help share and spread that love to really as many people as possible. What have we not talked about today yet that is important for the listeners to hear? 
I think the only thing that we haven't talked about today, oh, it's a it's a very large story, so we don't need to dive in too much. But uh, I know that you covered a lot with your podcast episodes and interviews and things like that of really just learning your body and spending the money and the time to find a coach, a qualified coach that is going to help you with those things. And so, like I mentioned, I had some health issues about two years ago, kind of right at the same time I was becoming a mom. My hormones were rock bottom. My cortisol levels were through the roof. My numbers were, I was like a, a pre-diabetic phase, which all of these things seemed nearly impossible to me because I own a fitness business. I help others achieve their health and fitness goals. Um, I had gained 20 pounds and there was just so many things going on with my body. And at first I just thought it was because I was a mom and I had added, added stress. Um, but then I learned that I had these hormone issues going on and, and all these other things. And so taking the time to find professionals that are going to help you in the right way, in the natural way, if possible. And so doing a deep dive of blood tests and hormone testing and all of those things to really get to, like you talk about, what is the root cause, right? Most doctors are going to tell you, you know, how can I put this Band-Aid on to fix this issue and, you know, give you medication, but how can we solve the root cause to what is going on so that you could be the healthiest individual possible and thrive? Mm -hmm. Yes. And to that point, I feel like a lot of times it's something that we can eliminate rather than something that we can, that we need to have. I love that. Perfectly said. We just have to figure out what it is that we have to take away, eliminate, right? Instead of adding one more harmful thing to our body. Mm -hmm. I have two closing questions for you. Before I ask them, where can the listeners go to learn more? You can find me Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. The name is Jackie and the last name is Eriko, E-R-R-I-C-O. So Instagram is just Jackie underscore Eriko. And I am always here to connect and help others. So never feel bad, you know, shooting me a message or asking me any questions. I'm here for you. Perfect. And that will be in the description, of course. Now, what is your number one health tip? So whether that's diet, mindset, nutrition, physical, emotional, just the one piece of advice you'd like everyone to know. Start with mindset. So before you're going to go and achieve anything, dive into a new training program, a nutrition program, whatever it might be, you have to get your mind right to conquer something new and be ready for change. So I'm a really, really big believer that everything starts up in the head. So start there and then you can really conquer anything you want to conquer. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Our minds are so powerful. Yes. Okay. I've started a new tradition here and this is going to be more of a personal question. So you'll pick a number one through 100 and that will be your question. Ooh, 21. 21. What is your most treasured possession and why? Ooh, this is a good one. Most treasured possession, it would have to be family, family in general. Um, it's, it's what I work for every single day. It's what I'm building for. And I consider my family, my, my blood family, but also my business, my teammates and my clients are all family to me. I really like how you went non-physical with that. <laughs> I like that. It yeah. works though. It works. No, I love that. Okay. Thank you so much, Jackie. This has been really great and definitely check out the links in the description. Learn more from Jackie. She's an amazing fitness coach. And if you enjoyed this conversation, make sure you subscribe, come back next week for another amazing conversation with another great guest. Thank you. Jack. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jessica. It has been a blast. Thank you for all that you are doing for this space and the knowledge and education that you are spreading because it is making a huge difference. So thank you so much for having me. Oh, thank you for being here. And I hope you have an amazing day. Thank you. You too. Thank you.